Hallelujah. Jesus is the only way, friends. Jesus is the only way to heaven. No man comes to the Father but except through Jesus. And Jesus said, Come through the narrow road because broad and wide is the way that leads to destruction. But, but narrow is the way that leads to life. And only few people find the way to the narrow road. But Jesus has come to give us eternal life. And eternal life is only in the Son of God. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Whosoever believes in the Son of God, saved. But he that does not believe in the Son of God shall be damned, because he has not believed in the only name of the Hallelujah. Praise God. So why did Jesus come into the world? Well, Jesus came into the world because of sin. Sin is the cause of every problem in the world today. Remember sin, I said sin, singular, this one infectious spiritual disease. Out of sin proceeds war, hatred. Out of sin proceeds adultery, LGBTQ. Out of sin proceeds all sorts of confusion and darkness. And this sin brings a sentence called death, judgment. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. But guess what? There is a gift. The gift of God is eternal life. This sin brings death. And God is the God of justice. So God hates sin because He's a God of holiness. God is righteous and perfect. The, Lord, the Bible says the Lord cannot behold sin. The, the Lord hates iniquity. So because God is a God of justice, humanity is full of sin, humanity is full of all kinds of authorities. Humanity has served God in every point. But God loves mankind and still wants to save mankind. And I tell you today, friends, God extends his mercy. God extends his mercy towards us in that he sent Jesus Christ as the Savior of the world. Jesus came 2,000 years ago, friends. He came as a sinless, perfect man. Jesus was a good man, a just and righteous man. Jesus was not a sinner like us. He did not come from our world. Jesus is a man from heaven. And the reason Jesus came as a man is so he could, he could die for your sins and my sins. Jesus on that cross, friends, he came into this world to live the life you and I could not live. And when we went on the cross, we went to die the death you and I deserve. When Jesus hung on that cross, my friends, he was identifying with you to become a substitution for your sin by representing you on the cross. And when Jesus took your sins on the cross, he died for all of it. All of your sins were placed on Jesus on that cross, my friends. And when Jesus died, he was buried in the grave. And on the third day, on the third day, God raised Jesus from the dead. The resurrection of Jesus is an evidence of Jesus' Jesus, Jesus is divine power, Jesus is deity. Jesus is God who came in, in human form in our world. The Bible says in the beginning of the world, the world was with God and the world was God. And in verse 14 says, the world which was God became flesh. Jesus is God wrapped in human flesh. Jesus is God who came into the world as a man. And if I tell you friends, if you don't know God, look at Jesus. Jesus is God in humanity. And the reason we have to take on human form, the reason Jesus had to take up human form is so he could die for our sins. The reason Jesus had to take up human form is so he could die on the cross for our sins. And friends, when Jesus was in that human form, he came as a man. You know why? Because the whole world has sinned, the wages of sin is dead. We all deserve judgment, we all deserve condemnation. We all deserve a sentence of death in hell. But I tell you the friend, because of your sin, the Son of God had to come as a man because while you know God cannot die for anyone as God. 
God Almighty. God can die. God is impossible for God to die. So in order for God to die, God has to put on human form. In order for God to die, God has to go on the cross as a man. So Jesus, the Word of God, came into this world as a man so he could die the death of criminal. He was not the criminal. He didn't do anything to deserve the crime, to, to, to deserve death, but he went on that cross this part of your sin. He went on that cross because he loved you. And when Jesus hung on that cross, he was carrying the sins of the whole world. Your past sins, your present sins, and your future sins, my friends, were placed on the Son of God on that cross. And when Jesus put them on the cross, He was putting your sins to judgment. He was putting all of the sins of mankind into hell. When He died, He went to hell to incur the sins, the judgment of humanity. But something glorious happened on the third day. Jesus rose from the grave. He defeated sin. He defeated death. And He rose with power and immortality and eternal life. And Jesus said to you now, now, I am standing at the door of your heart and I am knocking. If anyone believes and know my voice, I am going to come in and dine with them and go with me and we will become one. Why not come to Jesus today because you love Him and you want to commit your life to Him and make Him your Lord and Savior. You see, friends, the Bible says all need to bow and all tongues confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords, the glory of God the Father. All need to bow, whether you like it or not. One day you're going to bow to Jesus, friends. And you don't want to bow to Jesus when it's already too late. That's why we're here out here preaching the, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ to you that Jesus loves you. Regardless of what you've done, regardless of your sin, regardless of the masturbation, regardless of the, uh, the adultery, the LGBTQ, you see, God loves you, for God so loved the world. While you were yet a sinner, God commended His love towards you in that He sent His only Son Jesus to die for you. And God is calling every human being. It doesn't matter who you are, friends. You may be Chinese, white, black, Caucasian, Hispanic, whoever you are from whatever racial background you come from, God is calling every man in the topic of the earth to believe in His only Son, Jesus Christ. Because you see, friends, life is too short. The human life is too short. The human life is going to crumble someday. The human life has a tendency of getting sick, getting infected by viruses and diseases. How long do you have to live in the earth? How long do you have in this world? You may live up to 50 years old, my friend. You may live up to 60 years old, 70 years old, maybe 80 years old. But I want to tell you something. The older you get, the more closer you get to your death day. The older you get, the more closer you get. The more closer you get to the grave. Because when you get old, you have stretch marks in your body, you have wrinkles on your face. These are the signs of mortality. These are the signs that the body is corrupt. These are the signs that the body someday will die. And I tell you, friends, the moment your body dies, the soul comes out of the body, the body goes to the grave, your soul goes back into eternity because your soul is eternal. And your soul is void right now. Your soul is full of. of of unfulfillment, they are still full of unsatisfaction. But God wants to give you life. The reason people go out for alcohol and sex and, and fornication and adultery, the reason people want to get a divorce is because the soul is longing for something eternal. Your soul is eternal. The reason why people go out for money because they are searching for something eternal. Your soul was created by God to be with the life of God forever. That's why humanity is seeking for happiness. Humanity is seeking for fulfillment. Humanity is seeking for satisfaction in the soul. Because your soul is eternal. But the money, bless you sister, the money can never fulfill your soul desire. The sex, the drug, the alcohol can never fulfill your soul desire. Only the life of Jesus, which is eternal life. That's why when you believe in Jesus as the Lord and Savior who died on the road to give you eternal life, that He rose, that He rose to give you life. When you believe in Jesus, you are saved. And even though you may die someday, your body will die, but your soul and your spirit will pass from death into eternity in the arms of Jesus in heaven forever. How long will you, how long will you, 
will it be for you to receive Jesus? How long are you going to stay in the earth? The Bible says it's a point that you're made to die once and then come judgment. It is a point that you're made to die once and then come judgment. The reason people are afraid to die is because they don't know where they're going to go. But I want to tell you today, friends, death is the terror of humanity. Death is the one problem humanity has not been able to solve. Humanity, humanity has been able to find a, a drug, a vaccine for COVID, COVID virus. Humanity has been able to find a drug for, for HIV and AIDS and all kinds of disease in the world. Yes, humanity has been able to solve so many problems in the world today, but humanity has not been able to find a cure for death. The cure for death is, is still in the mortal body of every man. And I tell you that cure cannot come from you, from your president, from Joe Biden or Kamala Harris or Donald Trump. The cure for death and sin is only in the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus has the power to wash away all sin. I tell you, friends, there is only one thing that stands between all, between birth and uh, between all and, and death, is whether you want to receive Jesus today. Jesus is the only way to eternal life. Jesus said I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Remember, he didn't say I'm one of the way. He said I'm the way. Jesus didn't say I'm one of the lies. He said I'm the life. Jesus didn't say I'm one of the truth. He said I'm the truth. Are you seeking for truth? Come to Jesus. Jesus is the personification of truth. If you have Jesus, you have truth. If you have Jesus, you have life. If you have Jesus, you have the way. And I tell you, friends, Jesus is the only man in the history of humanity who ever died and rose again from the grave by himself. Jesus predicted his death. Jesus said, I will lay down my life, and on the third day I will teach it back up again. And it shall come to pass when he died, he rose back from the grave like he said it. No one can be that so certain about your future. And I tell you, friends, you don't know what the future holds. You don't know how long you're going to live on the earth. You don't know if tomorrow will be your last day. You don't know if next week, next month, or next year. Nobody knows. Only God knows. But I want to tell you, friends, the reason why you're still alive and walking here today is because the grace of God has been keeping you thus far. Why not come to Jesus? Because the human life is not going to live forever. When you're going to drop this body because the body is not who you are. Who you are truly into that body is your soul. Your soul consists of your intellectual. Your soul consists of your emotions. Your soul consists of your free will, the freedom of choice. Your soul consists of the knowledge you have accumulated over time. And I tell you that part about you will go out into eternity without God and love forever. But Jesus came to the world so he could die for your sins. He laid down his life and took the sins of your soul on that cross. And Jesus said, He that believes in me, that I, I am the way, the truth, and the life, they will have life. They will have life. You see, friends, the Bible says when God created Adam, God created Adam perfect and put Adam in the, in the Garden of Eden. The God of the universe created the moon, the moon, the stars, the, the planet. He created the universe. He created the galaxy. The God of the universe created the planet called Earth and He created man and put in this world. He created man so He could love man forever and so man can live with, with Him in a fellowship, in an intimate relationship forever. But when God said to Adam, Adam, I give to you of all the trees of the garden, you may eat of all the trees, but do not touch the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But what did Adam do? Adam rebelled against God. The rebellion and disobedience of Adam was as a result of sin. When Adam sinned against God, Adam infected the whole human race. Because when Adam and Eve gave birth to humanity, the Bible says we were all born we were all born in sin and shed in iniquity. But then when you, when you came into this world, you sinned by birth. When you grow to the age of accountability, you sin by choice. And you keep on sinning. You keep on sinning by practice. And you become sinner by nature. And the Bible says, the wrath of God is upon all evil doers. We are all sinners. We are all imperfect. We all say God, say, and there's nothing we can do to please a righteous and a proper God. God is a God of justice. God is a holy God. He 
is the God of righteousness and God does not overlook sin. The way God judges sin is on the cross. The cross of Jesus was the mercy of God for all of mankind. God saw you that you could not pay for your sin and God said I love you so much. I'm not going to condemn you because I love you and I created you for a purpose. I created you to keep you a bright future. I 